Mr. President, do you support the UAW demands? I think the UAW gave up an incredible amount back when the automobile industry was going under. And I think that now that the industry is roaring back, they should, that they should participate in the, in the benefit of that. So yes, I support, I always support the UAW. Did, did the Trump's decision to visit the UAW workers play into your decision to go? Absolutely not. This is a decision uh, to visit the picket line was based off his own desire. Uh, President Biden will be joining the picket lines with United Auto Workers strikers in Michigan today. The White House claims that Biden's visit has nothing to do with former President Trump, who uh, had already planned to go tomorrow. He'll be meeting with the strikers in Detroit tomorrow. Joining me right now is Michigan Congressman John James. He's a member of the Transportation and Foreign Affairs Committees. Congressman, thanks very much for being here. I, I know you recently met with UAW strikers yourself, and you brought them breakfast. Uh, tell us about that. And your thought on Biden's trip, uh, coincidentally, the day before Trump is going to visit. Coincidentally, yeah. Beijing yeah, Biden right. doesn't care about UAW auto workers. Uh, Beijing Biden cares about his climate change leftist Green New Deal agenda. Uh, when he comes down uh, in advance of President Trump's trip, because he's uh, terrified of being upstaged, uh, he needs to justify why the penalties that his administration is going to level on the automotive companies would crater these union folks' bonuses. He needs to tell these folks that the EPA penalties uh, and, the, and the NHTSA penalties that be coming down that would cost billions, uh, uh, that, that uh, the profitability of these auto companies that go into the, uh, the, these bonuses, how that's not going to affect them when it comes Christmas time. Uh, he needs to justify to the American auto worker why he sold them down the river for these climate, uh, uh, these climate activists uh, who are, are really just juicing uh, China's economy. Well, it's a great point that you make, Congressman, and I want to stay on it for a second because, I, I, I mean, President Biden's whole, you know, narrative that he supports the unions and that he's, you know, Union Joe, it, it completely falls flat when you consider his policies. He's been pushing a climate change agenda, which is jamming electric vehicles down everybody's throats, and it takes fewer workers to make an electric vehicle in America. I mean, that's just the fact, because, you know, many of these components are made in China. Is he going to explain that as he, quote, unquote, joins the picket line? Look, I went down there to listen, and, and President Biden is coming down here to patronize. When he comes down here, he needs to talk about his policies and the fact that he actually doesn't hate fossil fuels. He doesn't hate oil and gas. He just hates American oil and gas. He has no problem going to Venezuela and to Saudi Arabia, uh, where people are starving and they have human rights violations and asking for energy. He has no problem selling our strategic petroleum reserve to China, and now it's at the lowest level since I was three years old. He has no problem with that. He has a problem with American auto workers getting uh, getting jobs. He has a problem with American auto workers thriving in the future, where even Sean Fain, the UAW president, is saying that due to this EV transition, double digits, people who are striking right now aren't going to have jobs in the next five to 10 years. That's a big yeah. problem with me, representing Michigan's 10th congressional district, the number one manufacturing district in the nation. Michigan's economy owes its it's, uh, it's growth and survival to the survival of the automotive industry, and we need to identify the issue. The issue is the Biden administration in, the, in, the, in D.C. Uh, is actually pit pitting the environmentalists against the UAW. It, it, it's putting the survival of automotive companies in peril, and it's building the, 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 uh, the jobs in Mexico, sending our tax dollars to China, building the middle classes overseas uh, on the backs of ours. We can't let that happen. Yeah, it's a great point that you make, because remember, he had no problem helping the Chinese Communist Party with their energy needs, right? We all know about the infamous 10 percent for the big guy email, where they were doing a deal with CEFC in China, which is an energy company. And according to House Republicans, they were doing a partnership with CEFC, Hunter Biden's firm, and they listed everybody's ownership in that company. And it was, you know, 20 percent for this one, Hunter, and another 10 percent for Jim, and 10 percent held by H for the big guy. So your point is well taken. He, de he doesn't hate fossil fuels. He just hates American fossil fuels because he was perfectly willing to work with China 
for their fossil fuel needs. Meanwhile, former President Trump is accusing President Biden of destroying the United Auto Workers overall, putting out this statement on Truth Social. President Trump says, when Biden slowly walks to pretend he is a picketer, remember he wants to take your jobs away and give them to China. Turn your back on this president and shout out to your union leadership to endorse Donald J. Trump. Congressman, this is what President Trump put on, and he's going to go there and do a rally, I guess. I don't know what his plans are when he goes tomorrow. Well, you know, uh, it's CNN. CNN actually just reported late last night that there's so much confusion and, and mystery shrouded in Biden's trip uh, coming up very shortly here. Uh, could that be because there's a lack of organization and focus? Could there be that there are folks in the administration that really don't stand with automotive workers? Uh, there's frustration with lawmakers uh, of what's actually going on. And it's highly irregular, highly unusual that this close to a president's trip that logistics would be described as a mess, as chaos. Yeah. Well, we're going to see what exactly happens. And I think this is a pure and simple indication that Biden is trying to jump out here. He is trying to, uh, to, to uh, not be upstaged by the president, because we here in Michigan are not stupid. We recognize that these are policies that, uh, that will release uh, Biden's agenda, uh, will cede American in uh, energy independence, when actually the House, the, the, the GOP House passed uh, the, uh, the uh, HR1, which should lower energy prices. We're talking about our economy. The best yeah. way to help our economy and lower prices for everything is to lower our energy costs. That's what the GOP House is about. And the Biden administration wants to increase your costs, wants to increase your pain. And Beijing Biden cares more about enriching the CCP than he does about you. Yeah. And now we're worried about an economy that is about to head into recession at the end of the year or next year. Moody's is warning that the U.S. risks losing its top credit rating if the government shuts down next week. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre is blaming the Republicans. Watch this. What they're going to do, protect, potentially leading us to a shutdown, is going to hurt American people. No, we do not understand why they would put our economy at risk. That's what you're just laying out. Why would Republicans in the House put our economy at risk? Uh, when we have seen the improvements over the last two years, this is something that does not have to happen. It does not have to happen. Well, yeah, it didn't have to happen if not for the Democrats' spending. Uh, your colleagues say that uh, the Democrats have borrowed and spent more than $6 trillion in the last two and a half years, Congressman. That's why the Federal Reserve had to intercede and raise interest rates 11 times. Yeah, th this is purely the language of an abuser. The Biden administration is using language of an abuser. Look what you made me do. This is purely their fault why they're in this situation. And so me and my fellow lawmakers have to come back and we have to cut their, their wasteful spending that is mortgaging our future generations' futures. Uh, and we also need to make sure we keep the government open so that people who are desperate for services, like veterans calling suicide hotlines, our seniors who are desperate for, for services and help, uh, for training for our, our FAA uh, 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 air traffic controllers, isn't stalled. Uh, we need to be able to walk and chew gum at the same time. Uh, this is so, part of the reason why I propose my bill, uh, put your money where your mouth is. It's essentially no pay for politicians if we shut down the government. This has received bipartisan support, and I'm going to be pushing that forward. We should absolutely be lowering costs where we must, but we also must not negotiate on the backs of the people who, who need it the most. If politicians don't work, politicians shouldn't get paid. Wow, that's good. So, okay, that's your bill, uh, no pay for politicians if the government shuts down. Are you going to vote for this continuing resolution, um, which makes the border the, the uh, main focal point? Um, and there's still money to Ukraine, though, in there. I know there's a lot of debate in terms of uh, these bills, but how do you think this plays out this week? I'm going to vote for the most conservative option uh, to, move our, to move our nation forward. And I believe that conservative option is absolutely putting Democrats on their heels um, for their terrible immigration policies. No immigration policy. We absolutely must secure the border. Border security yeah. is national security. And voting for a resolution that would incur, uh, 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 assure border security would absolutely, um, uh, from, from Texas to New York, would absolutely give the people what they want. The people want a secure border. The mm. people want to feel safe in their own homes and communities, and Congress sure. must act to pass border security, keep our government functioning, and cutting wasteful spending. All right, Congressman, we'll be watching your work this week. We know it's important. Congressman John James, thank you for being here. We appreciate it me. in Michigan. We'll be right back. Stay with us.